What's up, everyone? Welcome to Nine Nerd Yards. We are continuing with the two episode premiere of Atlanta season four. Go and check out my first video if you haven't already. And sorry in advance for taking so long to drop this one. I've dropped like five videos in the last week, which is more than I've dropped in the previous three months. And your boy is mucking. Please show some support and give me some feedback. But for now, let's get into the episode. Episode two, the homeliest little horse, starts us off with a lady named Lisa walking her dog when she notices her neighbor coming home from a shift and she's down horrendous for this guy but he doesn't even know she exists hi morning <laughs> She's listening to Sierra and eating an egg while gazing at him through the window. But then she gets an email from a book agent that wants to possibly sign her after reading her manuscript online. Obviously, she is hype as hell for this. So at first, I thought this was going to be an anthology episode like season three and was a bit worried. Although I've come to love the anthology episodes in season three, I really wanted to get as much time with the main cast as possible. And thankfully, we cut to Earn in his car when he receives a call from Al because he can't can't remember his Xbox Live passcode. You remember my gamer tag login? How the hell would I know that? Just keep saying go into my old email or something. Which email? Dang. As in AOL. Here is where we see Earn has really become a great manager because he knows Al's security questions depending on what point of his life he answered them. They say it's my favorite movie. Scarface? Scarface, right? Like that's gotta be it, man. Hold on, let me try that. No, and it was in middle school. Try Mulan. <laughs> Oh, it's funny to think how Al transitioned from being a Disney kid to Scarface kid and RIP aim. Could you imagine if at the end of my videos I was plucking my aim? But here's where Al kind of gets on my nerves because Earn admits that he's going to therapy and Al kind of clowns on him for spending his money on therapy. Say that again. You want, what you doing? Therapy. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, oh, so you rich, rich? This fool giving money away. All right, bye. <laughs> <laughs> And we gotta stop doing this. Motherfuckers need therapy. Al needs therapy. Van needs therapy. Darius. Darius? Darius is probably good to be honest, but I need therapy. And if you need help, try to find the resources to get it, make it happen. Matter of fact, I'm going to leave some links to resources down below in the description. And if you find out your friend is going to therapy, please support them. They're going for a reason, rant over. We cut to Earn at his therapy session and Earn is on the phone kind of big timing the therapist and not wanting to disconnect. Earn, I know it can be hard to disconnect, but we can't have productive sessions with your cell phone on. Now I'm debating on how I want to do this breakdown because there is honestly so much I want to cover from here, so bear with me. Right away, Earn reveals a few things of note. Probation ended and his alma mater asked him to come speak. Probation ended. Uh, my alma mater asked me to speak. So. I didn't realize the possibility that Earn could have still been on probation for the shooting in the first episode. Also, in that first episode, we learned that Earn is a Princeton dropout, but we have never learned why. But the fact that Earn has been asked to speak from an Ivy League school is a clear sign of how far Earn has come since the Big Bang. However, it's also revealed that Earn has been having some heart issues and some numbness that his doctors believe is being caused by stress. So his vitals are being monitored like Alita Battle. Angel. I have a tightness in my chest and a pain numbness going down my left arm. They say I'm healthy. They think I'm lying. Do you have reason to think they don't believe you? If they did it to Kim Porter, they'll do it to me. Walking around like a leader battle angel all weekend. Whoa! Earn thinks that his doctors are kind of playing him like Kim Porter, the model and former spouse to Diddy, who passed away in 2018 under strange circumstances. But Earn's therapist lets him know that it's very possible to have your health change due to stress. Earn retorts that he has nothing to be stressed about. He's more successful than he could possibly have have dreamed of and he's getting more clients. But there is this one thing about him moving out of Atlanta to LA and he hasn't told Van yet. Uh, I got a job offer in LA, creative consulting. Mm. I haven't told Van yet. And just mentioning this causes him to grab his chest. This is definitely going to be causing some problems down the line because Earn wants to take Lottie with him with or without Van. And with this, Earn asks to lay down. We now cut back to Lisa, who is meeting with Gordon Rosenbaum, literary agent to the Eastern Seaboard. The name is Gordon Rosenbaum, literary agent to the Eastern Seaboard. But not before we get the return of the wave master himself. Tracy is back, baby. And I am so proud of him for getting a nice office job and hustling. No more waves, but he's still styling. Dallas, the change of flight? What the hell? 
But what about for medical emergencies? And a sharp eye viewer may have seen this return coming because in the email that Lisa received at the start of the episode, you will see that Gordon's assistant has been CC'd in the email. However, something already seems shady, right? I mean, this guy's office sign is just printed out on paper, and he seems very eager to sign Lisa without much overview. Deadline. Well, yeah, it's a it's a seller's market. End of the quarter, publishers are offloading their budget. Now, Tracy has... Uh I didn't call you, right? And congratulations, I accept. Oh, uh, accept what? To be your book agent. There's my card. Call me if you need anything. <sighs> One detail I do like is that the books in Gordon's office are real children's books that are very Afrocentric. I'll throw up the names in editing. Tracy cuts the meeting short to push Gordon along to his 10:30 meeting. On his way out, he urges Lisa to rush and get illustrations to go along with her book and to go get her swag together for a book reading at the local library in a week. Oh, and there's a hair place at the mall. Talia's. They can do something about those grays and. You're smoking hot for Raul, our photo guy. Things are finally looking up for Lisa. Good for you, Lisa. We then cut to Ern's second session of the episode. The therapist asks him who he trusts, and the answer is basically no one, except for Darius. I trust people to be themselves based on their incentives and what they've rationalized. So, no one. Maybe Darius. Ern inquires about a box in the therapist's office, and it turns out it's a new keyboard, but he won't play anything for Ern. Now, the topic is changed back to Princeton. Ern reaches back out to Princeton saying that he would agree to speak for them if they gave him an honorary degree. And they actually accepted. No, I told him to give me an honorary degree or kiss my ass. Mm. And what'd they say? They said yes, to the degree, not my ass. Which again, this is huge. I mean, this isn't South Harmony Institute of Technology. It's a proper Ivy League. But why is Ern so upset about the notion of going back to speak at Princeton? And we finally get the answer to one of the biggest questions that has been lingering ever since episode one. Fuck that school. Sounds like you resent them. They're only after me now because of two reasons. One, because being black is valuable, and two, donations. You've alluded to it, but what exactly happened to you at Princeton? So basically when Ern was one of the resident assistants in his dorm at Princeton, him and another RA, a white girl named Sasha, had a bit of a budding relationship. Now Ern lands a job interview and buys a nice suit that his parents helped him pay for. And the night before the interview, another one of Ern's crushes asks him to go to a party. Sasha overhears this and offers to take the suit back to her room so he can just go to the party straight away. I'll let him tell the rest. I go to the party, I come back, I text her to get the suit, no response. I text her again, no response. I text her a third time, same thing. Hours before the interview, freaking out. So I'm texting her again, I'm like, hey, where's the suit? I really need the suit. And she just writes back, sorry not around. So Ern uses his RA card to get into Sasha's room and get his suit for the interview. This makes Sasha furious and she snitches on him for invading her private space. I went in there with my master key and I got my suit and I left. Big mistake. She told the dean and it became like a real thing. He's coming back saying like, oh, this is a suspension. And then it turns into expulsion, intruder, personal assault, attack on privacy. And what comes next is nothing less than the best performance I have seen on this show. Everybody on campus is talking about me. I'm like one of 12 black kids. You know, I already felt alone. What else did you feel? Hurt, Why? I guess. Why? Because we were supposed to be friends. You were hurt by someone you trusted. Yeah. Like the family member who abused you. Yeah. Which made you feel powerless again. I am having trouble with even making this breakdown because where do I even start? We finally have our answer to the Princeton question and so much more thanks to this therapist who I will now mention is named Dr. Everett Tillman and played by Sullivan Jones. And you probably do recognize Sullivan's voice. He is the introduction and promo voiceover. FX presents Atlanta. And what a play by casting, because this is a voice that we as audience members associate with the show, but as an outside entity of the show. I am trying to find the words, but to me, this choice in casting also borders on the edge of surrealism. It almost feels like he's also been watching the events of the show and has now decided to make an appearance. It feels downright ethereal that he would be the one that guides Earn to open up. It is the most genuine we have seen Earn in quite some time and probably the most real moment he has had in the whole series, but it is still mired by a wall and boundaries that he has built up throughout his life. We get the answers to why Ern didn't finish at Princeton, but did we really get the answer to what he has been going through? We could say that the situation with Sasha was due to racism, perception he faced as being one of the few black people in Princeton. We can blame it all on Sasha. 
But then there comes an even bigger revelation. Earn has internalized his experience into a spite-filled track to success. I just proved everybody wrong. Did you prove everyone wrong? Yeah. I love spite. It's a pure, powerful thing. Hmm. It gave me courage. You know, I can count on it. I used it when I came back to Atlanta, you know. Earn needs help. And don't get me wrong, I have also used my pain and resentment to accomplish shit in my life that I may have only done because of it. I mean, the red lightsaber is cool as fuck. And in the moment, it can feel very good to be a spiteful motherfucker. However, whenever I'm like that, I'm not very fun to be around. And the dark side is... Well, dark. Does that make sense? <laughs> I'll actually let the good doctor say it. Spike can be very powerful, but it can also leave you depressed and empty. Goals stop becoming yours. Start becoming a, a book written by somebody else. Someone with no incentive for your well-being. So by not going back to Princeton, you may be proving something to her and not yourself. Another question, which family member abused Ern? I mean, my first thought is Al's mom, and that would break me even more, but maybe we'll find out. Now, one more thing I want to bring up in this that I can't help but also relate to this episode is Kendrick Lamar's latest album, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. That album is actually structured and broken up in therapy sessions. Kendrick discussing his own use of spite to make himself successful and lead Leading to a breakthrough moment where he comes to terms with the abuse he has experienced as a kid, a coming of terms of generational trauma. I'm not saying these two projects are linked in any way, but if you haven't listened to the album yet, go check it out as sort of a compendium listening to this season. Let me know if you do like that album, if you feel that comparison. I could honestly write an hour long video about this episode, but I'm tired boss, and I am 100% sure that we will be coming back to this moment many times throughout the season. So talk to me in the comments, I need to hear y'all for this one. From here, we cut to Lisa having a chat with her friend over some coffee. Her friend seems to be telling the story of what her expectations were when she moved to Atlanta to meet Outcast and get married. I was thinking that I was going to meet Outcast and get married. <laughs> this season is currently two episodes for two episodes with Outcast references. At this point, I'm expecting Three Stacks and Big Boy to make an appearance for this final season. Lisa comes clean that she has quit her job and is pursuing this book deal. Her friend is not happy about this because apparently she has been supporting Lisa with $500 a month. I can't loan you another $500 this month I'm and seems to not even like Lisa's writing anyway and when Lisa finds out she ain't cutting the check she dips out of there leaving the bill for her tell me you like my writing Lisa um okay Lisa we cut back to Earn for the third therapy session of the episode. He immediately lays down on the floor, and the good doctor has actually gotten him a floor pillow as a present. He still won't play any tunes for Earn though. Oh, that's good. Now all I need is some music. So it's a full service thing here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe later. So Earn reveals that he decided to take on that speech at Princeton, but when he tried to go with the van and Lottie and make it a family trip, he ran into an issue at the airport. He didn't have his driver's license, so he brought his passport. But the white lady that was checking him in won't let him travel because the passport was worn out and too damaged to travel. On a domestic flight? On a domestic flight, that's exactly what I said. So as Earn tells it, the white lady is giving him a hard time and won't let him travel. But when he approaches a black agent they let him through but is once again thwarted by the white lady because she already snitched on him problem she checks our bags no problem and tells us that that nazi ticket lady does this all the time to black travelers and guess what she's not even the manager i can't make this shit up so walks us through security so we can make it on time homegirl must have tattle because tsa is right there waiting for us at this point i'm like i don't want to go fan starts crying you know she's like i'm not gonna go without you so long story short we're still waiting on our baggage Ern says that he learned to not let the situation get to him because the good doctor has given him the tools to deal with his resentment in spite i was mad about the time that got wasted you know, I, I wanted to spend that time with fan and Lottie. I really wanted to connect with them. See, it sounds like you're recognizing the big picture. Yeah, the anxiousness and anger. You're not gonna achieve your goals with those, you know? And at this point, I'm also inclined to believe that Ern may have been more forgiving because if you remember from episode one, he used to work at the airport too. Ern seems to have really learned a lot and explains that he wants to take some time out from therapy and ends the session and keeps the pillow. You've given me so many good tools. I, I kind of want to deal with my issues on my own. You know, I'm impressed because most people, they end this over a phone call or email or oh i'm not that cold-blooded keep it it's too small for me don't be sitting on my height man now that's what i call progress right right oh i'm not that cold-blooded so we've reached lisa's big day and she's all done up with them baby hairs your hair talia's 
and she's got her dog with her. They may have botched her name a little bit, but who cares? And oh, she can't bring her dog with her even though it's a service animal and she has a doctor's note. I mean, she works at an airport and it's approved there, right? Still can't bring that dog in here. I work at the airport. This note is legally FAA approved. Well, story time begins in 15 minutes. Unless, of course, you and your dog want to try the airport. Wait, did she say she works at the airport? Oh no. Oh no. Well, maybe that's nothing. Lisa won't let that bring her down. And she goes in without her dog for story time and begins reading her book, The Homeliest Little Horse. The publisher wearing the hat is even there, like Gordon mentioned. I've arranged for a publishing legend to scout you there. Now, you can't miss her. Just look for that. Lisa is giving it her all, but the kids aren't feeling it. The horse in the story is dumb and ugly, and that's why no one likes it. <laughs> and that's why no one likes it. I don't like this horse. It's ugly. But always got lost by the old farmer's lake. This horse is stupid. That's why no one likes it. <laughs> These kids are going off, and the publisher leaves out the fucking fire exit. All except... <laughs> Oh god, this is a fucking disaster. The kids rag on her and everyone bounces out except for one sleeping kid that Lisa finishes her story to. Three cheers for the horse. Great. And come to find out that this dumpster fire is being recorded and playing at a bar where Ern is talking to Gordon about headshots. Darius and Al just got on the scene and Ern explains he's having a rap party. Remember that woman? Lisa Mon, the one that ruined my, my family uh, trip. Well, I hired all these actors to ruin her life. I think she's in debt now, seriously. So yes, Lisa is the woman that ruined Ern's trip. For a moment, it did seem like he put down the red lightsaber, but nah, he was just adding another blade to that bitch. And even Tracy shows up to collect his check and Ern drops an ominous sneak threat. Well, thanks for the cash, man. You crazy as fuck, boy. <laughs> yeah, man, hey, you better watch your back. You're next. Oh man, you fucking with me, man. What you gonna do to me, man? You know me. <laughs> Watch out. Al and Darius are in actual disbelief by Ern's willingness to destroy this woman's life. So you did all this to hurt one lady. Uh -huh. Hey, look, I'm gonna go to that Def Jam 3 machine because this yeah. nigga is tripping. Yeah. Ow. So let's take a look at the situation to talk about this diabolical plot. Clearly, this isn't a time consistent episode. Even though we start with Lisa at the beginning of the episode, everything that happens in her plot line is about a week after Ern's second therapy session because he tells the airport story in session three of the lady that did him wrong. But I want to refer to session two before the incident. There is this moment I've been fixated on that I believe holds significant weight. And that's when the therapist offers Ern a box of tissues. Ern immediately declines, but he then reaches out for it when the therapist isn't looking. For just a few beats, Ern is reaching out and almost as if he's been left hanging, he puts his hand down and goes on about spite. This is an incredible moment and I honestly believe that if he had taken the box of tissues or if the therapist noticed his attempt to grab them, this whole situation wouldn't have ever happened. For one moment in this episode, Episode, Ern was genuine and did not have his boundaries up and getting to that place was so hard for him that when the next person did him dirty or reminded him of that feeling of getting kicked out of Princeton or the feeling of not being able to trust the world after being abused by a family member, he ruined their lives. And honestly, I don't know how to feel about Lisa. I mean, she's the worst. She's probably a little racist and petty and it probably felt great to bring her down a peg. But did she deserve this? And I mean, it is all also shitty that she wouldn't let him travel. But at the same time, he didn't have his license. To the airport, you know, I'm looking for my driver's license. I can't find it, it's probably in my pants somewhere. When I take a look at the Sasha situation, isn't it weird that Ern let Sasha take the suit back? Why didn't he just take the suit and put it in his room. Him and Sasha, as he tells it, were in a budding relationship, and she overheard him making a plan with another chick. I'm not saying what Sasha did to Ern was at all warranted. It was really shitty that she got him kicked out of Princeton. Fuck that school. But I think Ern should have recognized that trap. Like, don't give that girl your suit, Ern. Don't do that. All I'm saying is that spite begets spite. So just like Ern is now acting out of spite, ruining Lisa's life, is it possible that Sasha was also 
acting out of spite trying to ruin Ern's life. So did Lisa deserve this? Maybe. But an even better point is did Ern deserve this? Because yes, he got his get back but at what cost? As the good doctor pointed out, when you live by the red lightsaber, you set goals not for yourself but for other people. At what cost? We spent half the episode with Lisa and that's someone we really don't even give a shit about. At what cost? cost. Now I'm seriously asking. This isn't rhetoric. Chum, you spent on all this, man. I'm not. I wasn't able to come to a definitive answer myself, but I found a source that says a small production could pay an actor $100 per day, whether they are rehearsing or shooting. So including Gordon and Tracy and everyone in the library, from the librarian to the kids, that's about 27 people that Earn could have been paying $100 a day for rehearsals and the day of the reading. And Earn even put in a little extra because the theater needs new costumes. I heard that you guys needed new costumes. I put a little extra for you and your puppet. So maybe two days of rehearsals for the 25 actors in the library and then the day of the plan. Three days in total. That is $7,500. But adding on possibly a few days of rehearsal for Tracy and Gordon because they really have to nail it at that first meeting. And Tracy's stack of cash looks just as thick as the one he gave the whole theater. Heavy shabbies, baby. <laughs> so let's say he paid Tracy and Gordon like 2k each. For actors alone, Earn paid $9,500. And Earn probably had to rent out that office space for that initial meeting, which had multiple rooms, but maybe he got a good deal on that, so let's say it cost him $500 to rent it out for the day. Then, then there's the camera and production equipment. A videographer and photographer there, so let's say 1000 daily just for the day. And the rat party at the arcade bar with drinks. I'm to say 1000 again. So my conservative estimate, I think I may be lowballing it here, is about $12,000 for this plot. <laughs> But I am also just throwing numbers around at 3am so please correct me in the comments and give me your estimate too. Let me know if my estimate is low, high, or right in the middle and I will heart your comment. Anyway, Darius says the best line of the season so far. I can't tell if this is extreme, extreme headiness or terrorism. And Earn is so creepy. It can be both. But at least he knows he's fucked up because guess what? While he's sitting alone at the bar with his drink, satisfied with a plan well executed, he says exactly what I was thinking. I really need to go back to therapy. And the episode ends with Cold Blooded by Rick James. Cold Oh, I'm not that cold-blooded. What an intense episode. I cannot wait for the rest of the season. Uh, there was a lot of things that I did miss in that I did want to make some Sopranos references. I wanted to do a Nathan Fielder, Ernest for You type of comparison. And what about Lisa and her baby hairs and the fetishization of black culture? I could have touched on that too. But hey, I had to get the video out sometime. I do have a Patreon now. You can go check that out. I upload exclusive content and will be dropping my my season one episode two video sometime in the next week thank you so much for the patrons that have already joined up i'll put their names up on the credits right now check me out on twitter go and check out the discord where we have over 200 people just theorizing and talking about atlanta instagram and tiktoks are coming soon when i have the motivation and time to put those together but you can go and find me on those platforms too if you want to give me an early follow like and subscribe and i won't ruin your life who knows